Welcome back. In this segment, we will look into some of the details of JPEG. JPEG has been a very successful standard established over 20 years ago in 1991. It has proliferated widely. It can be found, for example, in almost every digital camera. The acquired image is JPEG by default by the on-the-camera electronics. Only high-end cameras allow access to raw data. JPEG, like any compression scheme, consists of three basic building blocks. The first one performing redundancy reduction, the second one performing quantization, and the third one entropy encoding. This it is used for transforming each and every 8x8 block of the image. Quantization is performed by using uniform quantizers with different step sizes based on the frequency location of the coefficient. So in general, fine uniform quantizers are used for the low frequencies and coarse quantizers for the high frequencies. The part which is terribly innovative in JPEG is the application of entropy encoding. The DC and AC coefficients are encoded differently. Differential encoding is utilized for the DC coefficients by finding the difference of the DC in the current block from that in the neighboring block. For the entropy encoding of the AC coefficients, the block is first vectorized by zigzag scan, and then since after quantization, we have a number of zero coefficients. The run of the zeros preceding the value to be encoded is encoded, followed by the value of the coefficient. It is really a great demonstration of how the source symbols can be modified before entropy encoded. So let us proceed with the coverage of this successful standard. In this segment, we will discuss the JPEG compression standard. It stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. So JPEG is a working group which was formed in 86 by ISO and CCITT. It became an international standard, JPEG, in 1991, more than 20 years ago. It covers compression ratios 10 to 50 or resulting bits per pixel 0.5 to 2. The objective of JPEG is the digital compression and coding of continuous tone still images, both grayscale and color. It's clearly a highly proliferated standard. It can be found, for example, in any digital camera. The JPEG encoding actually takes place on the camera, and it's probably an option of not JPEGing the image only for high-end cameras. We saw that each and every compression scheme has three building blocks. So it's a transform-based approach that we discussed in the previous segment, and the transformation used is the DCT. We'll see how quantization is done in JPEG, and more importantly, you'll we'll see the inventive ways that are applied towards entropy encoding. The image to be encoded is first divided into 8x8 blocks. The blocks are zero shifted, so they range from minus 128 to 127 for an 8 bit per pixel image. Then the discrete cosine transform is taken of each and every block. So here are the DCT coefficients. The 0, 0 coefficient is referred to as the DC coefficient while the rest are referred to as AC coefficients from direct current and alternating current. So in this direction, the horizontal frequencies increase, while in this direction, the vertical frequencies increase. After the DCT coefficients are quantized, they are zigzag scanned. The reason for that is to convert the two-dimensional 8x8 array into a one-dimensional 64x1 vector. And the reason for that is that we want to generate long runs of zeros that will be utilized during entropy encoding. So the idea of zigzag scan is to visit the DCT coefficients along this path here in the order indicated by this. So the DC coefficient goes first, then this coefficient is the second one, 
the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. Entropy encoding in JPEG is performed in a very inventive, I would even say ingenious way, and provides a lot of the power, the compression power to the standard. The DC coefficients are encoded differently from the AC coefficients. When it comes to the DC coefficients, they're encoded differentially from the DC coefficient in the neighboring block. The main idea clearly is that neighboring blocks will have similar DC coefficients and therefore their difference is going to be a small number. This difference is encoded by the size first. So there is a table here that encodes the different sizes shown here by codes of different lengths and here are the actual code words. These are Huffman codes that are built on on the various sizes. So for size 2 we use a 3 length code and this is the specific code. After that the amplitude itself is sent. So if we look at the second table size 2 encodes these four different amplitudes. So this is the code for 2, the code for 3, and code for minus 2 and minus 3. When it comes to the encoding of the AC coefficients, they're first zigzag scanned, as was explained in the previous slide, and then each non-zero coefficient is first coded as run followed by size. So there is yet another table, table 3, that provides the Huffman codes for this combination of runs of zeros followed by size. So here's a run of zero zeros followed by size two. The length of this code is two and this is the actual code word. Then based on this size here, part of this code word, we go back to table two and encode the amplitude value. So here's another great example that when we perform Huffman encoding, we don't have to utilize the original symbols of the source, the DCT coefficients themselves, but we invent new symbols for the DC, again, coefficient, it's differentially encoded, and then we need the two code words of size followed by amplitude, while for the AC coefficients, after the zigzag scanning, we're looking for runs of zeros followed by the size followed by the amplitude. Let us now walk through a JPEG encoding example. Here is the image, would like to JPEG. So we divide it into blocks and we look specifically at this block over here and these are the values in this block. The DCT of this block is computed and here are the actual DCT values. The DCT coefficients are quantized. The way quantization is done in JPEG is shown here. So there are quantization tables like the one shown here. What these numbers indicate is the step of a uniform quantizer that is applied to this particular frequency. So we see by and large that fine quantization is applied to lower frequencies, smaller quantizer step sizes, while coarse quantization is applied to the higher frequency coefficients. So then the way quantization is done is to find the ratio between the coefficient and the corresponding entry in this quantizer table and perform the round operation. So for example, if we look at this coefficient, the step size of the uniform quantizer corresponding to that frequency location is 51. So 57 divided by 51, taking the round operation, will result in a one. Similarly, if we quantize this coefficient, minus 29 is divided by 103, and the quantized value is zero. So we see that, again, this table has spectral shape. A lot of work has done into designing such tables, quantization tables, by also taking into account 
properties of the human visual system. So looking at the quantized values, what we see is that there are now a good number of zeros. And this is the motivation that we want to zigzag scan these coefficients and then encode them by looking at runs of zeros. The other comment I would like to make here is that what's sent to the decoder are these values. And therefore, during the construction, this value needs to be multiplied by the corresponding step size to give us the reconstructed value uh, of the DCT coefficient. After quantization, the DCT coefficients are vectorized or zigzag scanned to form this one-dimensional array. Then this one-dimensional vector will be input to the Huffman encoding step. The DC coefficient is entropy encoded first. So the coefficient is 90. Then this operation is performed due to the fact that the mean was subtracted by, from the block. And therefore, the value of this DC coefficient is minus 38. If we assume that the value of the previous DC coefficient was minus 46, the difference is going to give us the value of 8. So we need to encode this difference of 8. We look at table T1 and see that 8 is here in size 4, and the code word for size 4 is 101. Then we need to encode the actual value of 8, the amplitude. So if we look at table 2, 8 is represented by this code word, and therefore this is the code the code word that will be sent to the decoder to represent the differentially encoded DC coefficient. Regarding the encoding of the AC coefficient, let us assume we want to encode this coefficient of value 24. If this was before quantization, first it will be quantized, so the quantizer is 12, therefore the value is 2. We look at runs of zeros and there are no preceding zeros. Therefore, the size is 2, because 24 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So, we go to table T3 and look for run size code word. So, run 0, size 2, this is the actual code word from table T3. Then for size 2, we go to table T2, and we see that the code word for 2 is 1, 0, therefore, this particular value 24 is represented by the code word 0110. After entropy decoding and inverse quantization, the inverse DCT is obtained. So for this particular block, here are the values of the inverse DCT that brings us back to the spatial domain. Then the image is assembled from this 8x8 eight eight block. So this particular 8x8 eight eight block is placed back to its location in the image. And for this particular block, the compression error is shown here. That the, here are the exact values, and here is the compression error for the whole image. As expected, the error is concentrated at the edges, at the areas of high spatial activity, because if you think of the whole process, are the high frequencies that are coarsely quantized and therefore thrown away this information at high frequencies, and therefore the error is going to have this high frequency appearance. Here are some general observations regarding the performance of JPEG. The performance is a function of the special resolution of the image. So when you consider here small format, CGA, 320 by 240, then compression ratios at half a bit per pixel produce poor quality results. But if the resolution increases to VGA, the quality becomes fair, and for Super VGA, the performance becomes good. Similar observations can be made for the other bit rates, 2 bits per pixel, good, excellent, excellent. This is actually a trick in some sense that people could play at times. They would propose a compression algorithm and test it 
at higher resolution images. Such higher resolution images have considerably more correlated data and therefore more can be gained uh, during compression or you can compress the data more. The perceptually lossless results are obtained at bit rates one and a half to two bits per pixel. We show here some results using JPEG at various bit rates. So cameraman at one and a half bits per pixel. We see no distortion. It seems very, very close to the original image. At one bit per pixel, the quality is still very good. You start seeing some artifacts around the edges here. At half a bit per pixel, then this ringing type of artifacts are quite pronounced and also you see blocking artifacts in the smooth regions of the image. And if we go further down to 0.2 bits per pixel, then you see plenty of this contouring, artificial contouring, and the edges are all distorted. However, it's still impressive that with only 0.2 bits per pixel on the average, we see, we have some good idea of what is in the picture. There's quite a bit of work in the literature, actually, as I mentioned, when we covered recovery in removing these blotting artifacts. This is a recovery problem and forms a post-processing step after JPEG or any compression approach for that matter. We try to remove some of the artifacts that were introduced due to compression and therefore improve the visual quality of the image. For these examples, a standard quantization table was used, like the one I showed earlier. One could modify that table and use a flat table, for example, or use a table that would perform fine quantization at high frequencies and coarse quantization at low frequencies. You can experiment with all these things using, for example, the VC Demo software package.